Sorry. Hi, hi everybody, and uh, welcome to the GMS uh, Magazine channel. I am Paco Garcia, and this is a very impromptu video that I'm making because I just came back from Dragon Meat. I am very excited about what I have been doing over there, and I wanted to show you the swag of stuff that I have bought at the show this year because um, some, as in a lot of those games, are going to see their way to the review pile. And uh, I'm sorry, I just need a cup of tea because I have arrived from um, very busy, as you can tell by my voice, 36 hours. So anyway, what have I got? The surprise of the show has been thus far Paleo Mythic. Um, this is a game that it's, I am very much looking forward to reading, but also I am a little bit trepidatious as well, because this is a role-playing game of stone and sorcery. It is based on the Stone Age. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's published by Osprey Games. It cost £25, which, although it's a fairly small little book, but it's a hardback, full colour, and also full of really gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful illustrations. So why am I a bit trepidatious? Because it draws an awful lot from um, tribal uh, look and feel and I am not entirely sure whether this has been simple cultural appropriation which I am almost oh, can't be okay with or if it's been misappropriation I don't know if that look and feel has been used properly respectfully or not I will not know until I have read the book so this one to look after is a pretty hefty tome I have to say at 286 pages so this is one to look for I'm gonna leave it here um, I got a little at last from Mr. Paul Mitchell himself from the hands of the man who wrote the book um, I am so pleased because although I backed the Kickstarter, unfortunately I completely missed because I am a scatterbrain, I missed the um, POD code. So getting this, I am so thrilled. So, so thrilled. And also getting it straight from Paul's hands was fantastic because he so happens, as it happens very often in this industry, that he's a thoroughly nice Fella, if you have played this game already, if you have already read it, I would be really interested in hearing what you have to say and your impressions of this game. So please do leave me your comments uh, down there after you subscribe to the channel. I also backed at this time Nibiru or Nibiru. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. And to be honest, I backed this game because I know Federico Sons, the author. I know that he's an extremely talented and very, very nice man, and I wanted to give him a hand. To be honest, what I did not expect is that I was actually going to be so, so interested in the game itself. So much so that I have already started to read it on the way back. And a few pages in, this game is really, at least setting, is getting to me so much. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, Nibiru is this mega massive spaceship, fortress, something or other, I don't know what it is, really. That's about 3,000 kilometers where about 10 million people live. And they don't know if it's a planet, it, they don't know much about it. They don't know about the past. They don't have access to certain parts of this structure. The artwork is absolutely fantastic. And uh, the characters begin as a Vagabond, vagabond, sorry, who uh, emerged from one of the desolate areas of the base without any kind of memory. They're completely amnesiacs. Although I have to say that the amnesiac is a trope that I am really tired of in regular role-playing games. But the fact that it uses it, the fact the whole game has been designed around it, it makes me very curious and very much looking forward to finding out how that is used in game itself. <laughs> This is one thing that I was so, I, I couldn't, I was, I said I wasn't gonna go come back. Alien game from Free League. Um, I am so gagging, although this is a super mega, hyper gorgeous tome in pretty much every single page. It's been uh, laid out so beautifully. And this is said by somebody who has 
massive difficulties because of dyslexia from reading on dark backgrounds. And yet, I am going to make quite an effort in getting to grips with this one because I think it's going to be very well worth it. So much so that when I saw the game, I, I also had to get, oops, sorry, I also had to get this, uh, which is a, an adventure, you know, um, Chariot of the Gods, whatever it is. And it's, it's an adventure, but it's, it's very well. Oh, this is very cool. I, I thought oh, I, I, I might as well. Um, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention this as well. Um, you know, maps and marker pack packs, uh, which I am very much looking forward to opening as well and see what's inside. This is very exciting. And oh, oh and, and, and the screen, the GM screen, uh, which apparently I've been told by reliable sources, reliable sources being the free league people themselves, that it actually is a useful GM screen. So this my friends, it's exciting. It was a lot of money, but exciting. Oh, 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 oh. And the pack of cards. This is a pack of cards that you can use for something in the game. I have no idea what for, uh, but I will find out. And uh, because it was on sale, I. Uh, well, you know what happens. Uh, what else? Well, I, I also wanted to get this. This is uh, the Warhammer starter set. I am very keen on starter sets. I absolutely love them. And I think that pretty much any game that's over a hundred pages should have some sort of quick start guide or some sort of starter set to make sure that people find it as easy as possible to get into the game. At the very, very, very least to show the, the rules of their bare bones so people don't have it that difficult. To, to get into the nitty-gritty of what the game is all about. So, um, I got this uh, with the aim of actually running this, and I'm looking forward to seeing what it's got inside. Uh, but I also um, got the Uber book, because the Uber book, uh, you can't have one without the other. I mean, I can't, you might. I, I just had to have it. I know that the Uber book is over gorgeous because I have people around me who have already bought it and, and played it and it's unbelievably cool. So that's absolutely excellent. And since I was at it, because as you can tell, I was at it. Um, I also bought the Five Green Pedal Scenarios by Graham Davis. And to be honest, that name is what made me buy this. I, I know Graham's ability to design adventures. He is somebody who deserves way way more accolades and a lot more of a voice than he has because he is an absolutely outstanding designer so that name alone and um, quite frankly it's a guy i like very much that name alone it's all i needed to want to try this and the special jewel in the crown of this trip has been this Peen Arcade, Peen Trading thing, I think. I don't know if this is going to be... Uh, let me see if I can actually focus this for you, because this... Oh, this is not the focus. Uh, let me see, this is the focus? Oh, this is not the focus either. Is this going to be the focus? Uh, no, this is the exposure. So, I maybe hit it here? Oh, here. Okay. Uh, let's, see. let's not connect that. Or that. Um, that's it, more or less. This is a Cthulhu pin. My friends, there are a hundred of these, oops, sorry, a hundred of these in the world. And I am totally and utterly thrilled that the guys from Chaosium were very, very kind and very generous to actually allow me to get one of these. I was begging for them. I was literally saying, please give me one. Because uh, um, my friend Ling having one of these. And uh, they literally didn't have any because they brought 10 um, with them. But David, one of the members of the crew, said, I don't want mine. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because he's the most wonderful man in the world and that allow me to get it because then they will say, okay, we'll give it to Paco because we were having dinner. There. Okay, here you are. And, and I got it. And I, you know, I was so, so excited. So Chaosium, you are a bunch of gents and 
and ladies. And I absolutely adore you. Uh, seriously, hanging out with you has been absolutely fantastic. So that's what you can look after or forward um, on the channel, on, on the RPG uh, side. It's not going to be the only thing. So by all means, do subscribe because I'm going to have an awful lot more coming up very, very soon indeed. And if you've been to Dragon Meat, please down there, show me your swag. I would love to see what I have missed because that could make it to my Christmas list and the Christmas list of an awful lot of people. So spread the love, spread the games. Let's make this Christmas list all about gaming. And if you've been at Dragon Meet and I haven't seen you, I am so truly sorry. I really hope we will get the chance to catch up again very soon indeed. But until the next time, I am going to have my cup of tea and maybe a nap and I will talk to you.